Hello guys, thanks for coming by the old Steve O's base camp today. Um, this video is kind of for Don out there, one of my subscribers, Don. So I'm kind of making this one for him, but uh, because he doesn't like me getting on my soapbox, but so I have to annoy Don once in a while. But anyway, uh, this is for you, Don. Anyway, I found something scary, guys, in my hive. Yesterday, I was goofing around. I saw, I saw one high was just going berserk out there. Bees were flying in out of that thing, and they were just fighting. I seen dead bodies flying out the front door and everything. Man, I'll tell you what. It was it was flipping crazy, guys, what was going on with that. So anyway, uh, I got bailed up, and I went on in there, and you're not going to believe what I found inside the hive. Here it is. I grabbed it. I had to kill it. I, I took my hive tool and gave it a pinch, but here it is. You, you guys have heard of the uh, the Asian hornets, yeah, murder hornets, hornets from hell or whatever. Here it is, here. Yeah, I don't know the head on that thing. I don't know. Uh, it seems like I've seen that ugly head somewhere before, but I, I can't place where. But anyway, I just, I, I terminated. Yeah, I terminated that. Speaking of terminating, uh, lost another friend. He was terminated by uh, Big Pharma and Modern Medical, yes. And he was a veteran too, a Vietnam veteran. Um, heck of a nice guy. Uh, he uh, a, I consider a genius. I mean, this guy, he was a genius with everything except his health. Uh, when it came to his health, he was dumb as a box of rocks. Now, I don't know if any of you have noticed that uh, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, okay? But I get what's going on. So what does that tell you about a lot of other people running around out there today? You don't need to be a genius for this one, guys. This poor guy, we talked to to him. Uh, I talked to him off and on for years and years and years. And for like five years or six years, maybe more, he started having issues. He got on a health kick. He saw me getting on a health kick. He got on a health kick. But he had a problem. He was, he was hooked on... Uh, crystal meth and, and crack cocaine and it's not the, the the drug stuff it is uh table sugar yeah everything carby all carbs he loved all carbs i told him he was gaining a ton of weight i said why don't you just he was bitching about that i said why don't you just stop just stop what you're doing and regroup bro but he was he was hooked he was an addict and it's not easy getting off. It's just tough. I, I've never been a cracked addict, uh, uh, you know, crystal meth addict, heroin addict. Never been any of that. But I get the concept, okay? And if you're on carbs and you've got health issues of any kind, I don't care what it is, whether it's skin cancer, gut cancer, uh, IBS, uh, acid reflux, uh, clog arteries, uh, everything, yes. You, you are in trouble and you're an addict, all right? So you got to get off the carbs. You got to get off sugar. That's what's killing this entire nation. We are going bankrupt. We can't be doing this anymore. So the old boy, he kept on... He wouldn't listen to old Dr. Steve. I got people now, guys, believe it or not, calling me Dr. Steve. Unreal. Unbelievable. And anyway, I've had a few people actually call me up and tell me that I, that I saved their life. Honestly saved their life. I mean, these are sincere people calling me up and telling them I saved their life. And, you know, it makes you feel good that someone, you've helped someone. But most of the time, 
It's coming in here and going out there, okay? People aren't getting it. And we need to start getting it because this entire nation is flat as broke. This uh, virus thing is uh, helping take people out, but they're already weakened because of the high carb situation diet this whole country's on. We're addicted to sugar. Uh, the only sugar I want to see happening is uh, plant. I want to have plenty of plantation sugar plantations, but I want to just make strictly for honeybees. And I want to put on the bags, not for human consumption, okay? And everybody thinks, oh, Steve-O, you're a beekeeper. You must be just swimming in honey. No, I'm not swimming in honey. I don't even eat honey. If I do, it's going to be once in, a, in eons uh, for simple fact if I get a cold virus or something. I have a little potion I make up, and I, I put raw honey in that and take it and um and one day we'll do that little thing i'll show you how to make that up and um anyway well back to my my buddy he kept going on and on and on to these doctors and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse the situation he's got diabetes uh he started losing circulation he started having issues now he starts having heart issues he started having a little bit of kidney issues I told him, I said, and then he'd call up and cry on my shoulder. And, and he says, I said, why don't you switch it up? Back in the day when he first started doing this, I was doing a little paleo diet. It's not a diet, really. It's just lifestyle. It's what we're supposed to be doing and what we're designed as human beings to do. We're hunter-gatherers. End of story. It doesn't need to get any more... Scientific than that, that's what we humans are. Yes, we can consume that stuff. But it will come back and bite you in the ass, okay? I'm living proof. I can tell you all the shenanigans that's going on with that and the hell I've gone through. So I'm feeling great now, but a lot of my friends are, aren't. He kept up. With this nonsense, I'd tell him, but of course he would laugh and giggle when I'd tell him stuff because he thought I was a complete flipping idiot. Uh, I have no idea what I'm talking about. I don't have umpteen years of college medical experience. So he's going to th these people thinking they're God. Now he wouldn't go to, he got jerked around a lot with the VA office. It's just as well. Those people are flipping doctor, uh, uh, and Frankenstein with their drugs and stuff and experiments. I've, I've, I've got a bunch of, be, uh, of veteran uh, friends from the NOM area, era, and uh, the, the, the stuff that these guys are telling me, I'm, it was scary what's going on. But anyway, he never did listen to me. My bud never listened to me. He kept on and on and on with these this nonsense it's corruption and greed is all it is guys it's just how to make money with human beings how about making money with uh selling beef selling steve-o some beef yeah how about that so anyway it finally got to the point with the old boy that they're putting in a a uh they had to put a pacemaker in him his heart was failing and then they uh, put in, have to put some chemicals in there too now because that's, this drug is counteracting that drug and on and on. So what we have to do now is install a pump, open you up. We're going to install a pump on you that goes in there and it's going to start injecting stuff. We're going to put, uh, this was like the $6 million man we're rigging up here, guys. They're putting a uh, monitoring system on him. This device that straps on, you got a bag that goes on there that's going through a uh, pump. The solution's going through a pump, through a needle, into your ticker. And then whenever your ticker starts getting a little crazy now, the computer, onboard computer that you got strapped to your body, is signaling the pump to shoot the juice to the heart. 
he carried this pump thing around for I don't know how long. And one day he called and he said, Steve, things aren't working. And I said, yeah, we've had this discussion. And it's so simple. If you just convert over to a carnivore diet, keto carnivore, I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. I said, you're one of the smartest guys I've ever known. This guy was a machinist. He was an inventor. Oh my God, this guy was sharp. But like I said, whoo, right over his head with common sense nutritional facts. He was convinced and brainwashed into thinking that that doctor, that he was playing with all these toys and stuff, was fixing him up. He didn't go to VA office anymore. Because he didn't think he was getting the right treatment there. And it was a little slow for him. But he worked for the county. And he had excellent health care at the county. So he went, had perfect health, you know, health care and insurance through, through the, uh, the, the uh, county. So anyway... That was great. He just loved that. And he could go in there and talk. He said, oh, these guys are so smart. They're just... I said, oh, I bet they're beauties down there. You want to stop listening? He just kind of laughed. And one day he called and he said, things aren't getting any better, Steve. And I said, really? Well, color me surprised, okay? I said, I've never known, you know, it's like an alcoholic. You can't... There's nothing ever good comes out of a bottle of whiskey, really, guys. Nothing. And these guys just keep dipping into the drug vat there and pumping these people full of stuff. And he, sa he said, you know what I'm up to now? What, what my whole situation's up to cost-wise per year? He said, I was tallying it up yesterday. I said, how much is that? You ready for this, guys? Go ahead and sit down. Go ahead and sit down for this one. $250,000 a year. But his insurance is covering most of it. Now, he was very... His dad passed away and had a heck of a business and, and gave him everything. He had money. He had plenty of money, right? But he, uh, he checked out. Yeah, he checked out, and he's gone. Had a lot of good stories and memories. Uh, we uh, grew up together, kind of, back in the day. So anyway, uh, that's what's going on, guys. You just got to get off of this this sugar. It's killing you. It's flat-ass killing you. And it's so simple to do. Once you get fat adapted, you're going to have cravings, but you can do the fat bomb. I don't do those fat bombs. You've seen me do the fat bomb thing. In a bit. That's a little crutch. It gets you over through a hard time of weaning off of carbs. And once you get off of carbs, your body is going to love you for it. Uh, you're going to uh, be fat adapted. Now, you will occasionally have a craving. Uh, i got a birthday coming up, and uh, I'm not going to eat... Uh, no birthday cake. No. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Not going to have any ice cream. No. Am I a party pooper? Okay. Oh, so be it. You want to uh, get a, a ribeye steak out and stuff a candle in it for me and light it? And I'll blow out and make a little wish and blow that out just before I throw that ribeye on in the skillet and cook that puppy up medium, Okay. And I'll be one happy camper. They say, Jesus, all this meat you eat. What? Don't you get sick of it? Nope. Nope. Because I know what it does. All you people running around out there, heading down there to the doctor. Oh, you got, you got hip problems and knee problems, shoulder problems. And he's going to inject you for a while. That Get that stuff in that joint, you know. Get that pain off of that, that uh, steroid or whatever that monkey jism they're putting in you yeah that that stuff there it, it won't work and you only have th like three of those shots annually so how toxic is you know that's toxic right so that's not a plan that's not a workable plan so what you're going to do is you're going to eat that ribeye and then you're going to that fat that's all around the edges of that now for years our doctors told us trim your steaks 
and throw away the fat. Can you imagine if you told an Eskimo back in the day, they're all sick and dying now, the Eskimos. They had a, these were very hardy people back in the day, hunter-gatherers day. I would say like before, you know, before the 50s, probably 40s and earlier when they were nomads. Nomadic people whacking seals and walruses and whales. If you told a, if you told a uh, Eskimo, uh, trim that fat off of that meat. Just eat that. Just eat that protein. Don't eat that fat. He probably would have picked up his either his bow or his harpoon, and shoved it through your chest. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. How stupid are, are these people? They're telling you, trim the fat and throw the fat away. No, when I eat a ribeye, all that fat, the only thing you're going to see left on that plate is a clean bone. Because even that, that membrane that runs along that bone, that, that hard sinewy stuff, I rip that off with my teeth, chew it up best I can, and swallow it. What's that going to do for you? All those joints that are creaky and achy, they're losing their, you know, that slippery little gelatin in there for cushion, shock absorber. That is what's cushioning your joints. You have to take that. You have to eat that. Okay. So this stuff of eating a chicken and throwing the skin away, skinless chicken, that is crazy. You eat the skin. You eat the fat off of that beef. You eat that gristle. And obviously, don't chew the bone up or you're going to be going to the dentist every other day, right? Okay. But drink, but have your bone broth, make your bone broth soup, brine, whatever, and drink that. A cup of that a day. And I got to get another pot of that cook. And I, Miss Daisy got a little pissed at me. She said, the whole place smells like a, I don't know, a soup factory in here. I said, what's wrong with that? I don't know. I just get sick of smelling it. Put it out in your barn. I said, no problem. So I put it out here on top of this bench right here. Yeah. So, yeah, I got to just keep on you guys about this and the shenanigans that's going on with the FDA. Uh, big Pharma, Modern Medical, yeah, uh, we're taking it in the shorts, we're taking it right in the shorts, and uh, I seen an ad what, yesterday on TV, I just about fell out of my chair, guys, I really did, you know, I won't call out their name, it's a little cereal, so they're a little round, look like little round donuts, there's some in different colors you get, and then there's the other ones, you know what they told me on that commercial? Why some of these people aren't in jail for false advertisement and find, find their shorts off, I don't know. They told me it was heart healthy. Oats. Made with oats. Made with wheat. All these different cereals made with wheat. We are not, let me repeat, we are not let me repeat, we are not designed that way to eat that stuff. No way. We got 200,000 years of evolution here, and I'm telling you right now, we can't eat that stuff. Everybody that you see eats that stuff has got eight major issues. You're sitting there eating donuts and Snicker bars and Oreos. You've got issues. So, yeah, we have to keep having these little, little chit-chats. So you guys get it. Now, if you guys like to swim in honey, you're going to have other you're going to have issues with that too. That's not good. Leave the honey for the bees. Raise bees and sell bees. That's all you need to do. You don't need to be swimming. Everybody's I, already, I go to the meetings. Everybody's sitting around bitching about honey prices. Oh, we're not getting enough for our honey. Give me a flipping break. Forget the honey. Forget the honey. Use it as a cold medicine. Raise bees and sell bees. These guys need bees to, to pollinate. You need bees for your garden and stuff. 
pollinate flowers and stuff. You need bees for that. You need bees for, I, I like almonds. I eat almonds. You can't, you can't have them almonds without pollination. Raise bees. Hook up with a commercial guy. Help him out. Sell him your queens, your package, your, your nukes and stuff. These guys, a lot of them don't have time to fool around with this stuff. They are hauling butt from going from Florida to California, loading up, going to Maine and Mass to get the blueberries and cranberries up there. They don't have time to fool around with this honey, most of them. But you can buy, you can make that honey if you want to and sell it. But as far as having honey on your biscuits every day, guys, it's not a good thing. All right, that's enough preaching for one day. I just did this for Don, you know. God bless you, Don. Thanks for watching my videos. And I got to aggravate you every once in a while. It's just a fun thing to do. So watch out for these guys in your hives. These are the uh, murder murder hornets. I've seen that I've seen that face before, and I just I don't know where I've seen it, but I know it's evil. I I know. I know that's evil. When I saw that thing and how it was chewing my bees up, I just had to kill it. So let's get out here and uh, do a little peekaboo in these hives and just see where we're at. I seen one weak one out there earlier. It probably crashed. Oh well, it happens. We don't get our panties in a wad. We just keep making up more hives. And uh, see how it's going. I don't think there's anything coming in. I don't really think there's anything coming in out there right now. I put a bucket out of syrup there the other day. They're drinking it like crazy coming off these tops of these hives. And uh, I had a little bit in the bottom of a five gallon bucket. I threw it in my little mop pail, threw a bunch of pine straw in there and hung it on my tree next to the pollen feeder. Within an hour, that thing was, a, I saw two bees on it just as I set the bucket down. And I came back an hour later, that bucket was dry. I mean, them bees sucked that thing out. It was unbelievable. So, there's not much coming in now. So, we'll just go and we'll peek through. See if they've got, you know, I've been feeding them. So, they probably got some stores on there a little bit. And just see how they're expanding. I want to go in on the uh, new moon, which is the 22nd of May. And we'll peek around. Today is what, seven? Let me check here and see what our date is today. Seven. So we got a ways, you know. But like I said, I, there's nothing much coming in. And I uh, wish they'd drop the sugar prices down uh, to a reasonable rate. I, I don't know why they don't. Restaurants are all down. I imagine the uh, donut shops. Well, I saw, I went by a donut shop the other day and they were lined up. Double car now. Double. Two lanes coming in. How they were working that deal, I don't know. But they were coming into a one single window somehow to get their donut, their sugar, their crack cocaine fix. And, uh, I, have you noticed lately, guys, you got a donut shop and then you got a Walgreens across the street or, or right next to it or something. You know, so you can get your you get your sugar fix, then you can go over and get your metformin uh, over at Walgreens. Uh, I think that's the way they work it. So it's 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 a great plan. It's not going to work. The whole thing's going to crash soon. Uh, yeah, it. Uh, hopefully, we can get this uh, get this country open back up again. I imagine there's going to be a lot more death with this uh, because people's immune system is in the dumpster and uh, taking people out. Uh, saw that 100, what was it, 100 and something today? 100 and something, one year old woman, 105, that got the virus and she pulled through it. What does that tell you? I bet Granny doesn't eat a whole lot of sugar. No. Puts her in a high state of inflammation. She probably gets it. She's probably old school gal. I think she's. They said she was born uh, uh, before World War One or during World War One or something. Yeah. Yeah. She granny. She's been around a while. She she knows something we don't, right? Okay. All right. Let's go out, get in the hives, 
and see what we're doing with those. And uh, I may even take a run over to my other bee yard. I put those two framers in fives. Maybe we'll shoot over there too and uh, peek in them hives. And a uh, beautiful day today. It's like 60 something this morning I got up. I guess the beekeepers up the road from me, George and Tennessee and all in there, they're crying the blues. They're getting some more, they're getting some more snow up there, frost. They had a little snap in the spring there. The bees were working. They got all pumped up and excited. And now, now the bees are uh, shut down again. It's a crazy year, but anyway, it is what it is. It's just farming, guys. That's all it is. It don't. Ain't no need to get your panties in a wad. Farming is up and down, up and down. You never know. As you were, we're playing with nature here. We don't know how it's ever going to go. You just uh, do the best you can and roll with it, you know. Grow, roll with the flow. And in, in this case, there is no flow, right? No honey flow. I don't see much coming in out here in my place uh, other than a little pollen here and there. There's some stuff fixing to happen. Uh, the palmetto, around here anyway, uh, hopeful, hopefully the boys made some in the state. I, I haven't talked to too many honey producers, and uh, but uh, I don't think that did anything this year. But I'm noticing a lot of tallow trees in my neighborhood, and uh, they're coming on good. I don't know, somebody, Johnny Apple seeded this spot, this area. It wasn't me, by the way, it wasn't me. Um... Uh, Anyway, all right, that's enough BS, and let's get out here in the in the beehives. Okay, guys, let's go in on this hive here on the end and see what's going on. If anything, Definitely a weak colony. It's a very weak colony. Quite a bit of nectar in here. There's a big old queen there. See her right there, guys. She just, she's, uh, she's just getting started, guys. Yeah, she's just getting started. So I'll just put Queen Right 5-7 on it. They got a little they got a little surplus. They got a little surplus of nectar in here. Too early to tell. 
tell how she's gonna work out. I mean, it looked like she was laying pretty good. Laying back everything. So she may just be getting started, you know. Let's go into this Georgia hive here. They've been drinking syrup like it's going out of style here. Check the lid, make sure she's not on it. an outside frame here they're starting to draw wax here's a string frame they're just starting to work on the string frame Loaded with surplus honey. Well, we got brood on this side. The smoker out of my face. It's choking me to death. Yeah, she's laying this thing up great, man. I'm telling you. She's doing great. When you guys buy in these packages, right... I can tell you right now, this is a 19 queen. This is not a 220 20 queen at all. But you know, some queens, I've heard them go all the way up to five years. Now look at that pollen they're packing in. And they've robbed, they've robbed a lot of the surplus. They needed wax. So sometimes they'll grab wax from other areas and they stole wax here. These are really cleaned off. Them little, they, they, they stole the wax here and to put it where they needed it. Here's one of my string frames. They're, they're laying it out. She's laying it out beautiful. They drew it beautiful as you can see. There she is right there. There she is. That's a Georgia baby girl right there, guys. She's working her little heart out. I've got, uh, they're about to fill this one up. They've got a couple frames to work on. So they're not hurting for... They're not hurting for space. I'm gonna leave that string frame on the outside and put this foundation one here on the inside. They've already started drawing it as you can mm -hmm. see. This will work out because we could come in here in this colony on the 22nd and rob some resources in here to make up some more nooks, you know. Don't know how many we can make up. I might, I might draw, I might steal out of this colony right here uh, to make up a nook. I'll steal one of her food frames. I'll steal two frames of just about solid brood, sealed brood, bees and all, and put my five frame nuke. I'll put a plain, I'll put a string frame on the outside edges. 
I'll put a date on there. Come back 30 days. I don't look in that high for 30 days. And see if we got a success story. And I'll probably make these bees up in this yard and haul to my other yard. That way we can seal them up. We can seal them up, take them to that other yard, and then open the hive up right away and let them bees fly. This one here says, uh, check on four, uh, five, seven. Today's five, seven. This was the other package, as you recall. I came in a week later, <coughs> no evidence of a queen whatsoever. I may have rolled her accidentally or something, or when they let her out, they didn't like her, and, and they balled her and killed her. That happens. You don't get your panties in, your, in a wad, you just set them back up and let them go again, okay? So let's see what we have in here. It's been a month since I did that deal. It's been a whole month. They're starting to draw it out, drawing out that comb. Drew it out nice on this side. Slap full of nectar. Lots of pollen. Now, it's an excellent food frame. This would be the one you want to rob for making up nooks right here. You got tons of pollen, you got honey in there. And what does Steve O see in these cells? He sees eggs. Oh yeah, oh yeah guys, we got it going on, we got it going on. All right guys, what we gotta do here now, this puppy here is ready to go into eight frame equipment. So let's do that. Let's put this box in eight frame equipment. I'm going to set this one on the ground. It's heavy too. This is my stand guys, very simple to build. I run screen bottoms on all mine here in Florida, year round. Very simple design. 
I lay these strips I lay these strips here on the on my table I don't do nothing to the corners at all I cut the screen the screen comes just on the inside this eight screen comes just on the inside all the way around I lay it on and I staple it and then you'll notice that these run this way and this one comes over top so then I sandwich it's only held together with staples the screen and this wood down here is only held together with staples then I put this strip on top and I pre-drill them and, and glue and screw them down and that's the entrance and then the shelf or the landing is all I do I clamp this on I glue it and clamp it and hammer in two eights eight nails in here number eight I nail it to shove it in I lock this in my vise so it can't get away from me and then I clamp it it's glued and then I just put two nails in it but the rest of the stuff is screwed on and I leave this it's about a I don't know three inch opening here that's it that's it guys I got my golf tee that goes to the back We'll keep this orientation about the same. Okay guys, I gotta get a few more frames to put in here, fill it up. Haven't seen any high beetles, so you gotta love that.
I'll come back later and put on some more feed on these girls. And what I do for that, I know an empty jar, I'll just stand it up like that. So we know to come back. I need to throw, I'll throw it, come back in a minute and throw that back on my into inventory. But we got them going here now. They're all converted over. And uh, they're coming along nice. With all these Chinese tallow around this neighborhood here, they really ought to pump up nice. Yep. So that's good. We got our. We, we're, we're retaining our we're retaining our Georgia stock those be these Georgia bees I'm telling you guys these things are just fantastic they're they're mellow I got stung one time over there because I I pinched a bee accidentally all right Queen right five seven. Queen right five seven. Miss Daisy says, "Sell more bees. Sell more bees." I do have the phone ringing off the hook for these things. Uh, this hive here. This hive here is, uh, I don't need to go into that hive. I got four over here, and I think that one is dead. No, it's this one here. This one is... Hive is down. She didn't get back from her mating flight. I got some frames here I need to melt down. They're garbage. See this stuff here? It's garbage. going to get melted down. Mm -hmm.
I'm gonna take these out and throw them in my melt pile. Okay guys, I put a 5.7 no queen, but that doesn't mean much. We'll come back in a week and recheck it and uh, see if we do have a queen because I could have a, I could have possibly a virgin out flying around here. Possibility. Possibility. I got to get some more smoker fuel. I'll be right back.
Well, we've got a screw up here as you can see, but there's a lot of there's a lot of brood in there. And we have a good laying queen in here. Got all kind of eggs down in here. So I don't want to go ripping this off. They've got room to build here and they're starting to build. But there was a screwed up string frame in there, and this is the garbage you get from that. She's not doing too bad here. This is actually another crappy frame. There she is right there. She looks Carnolian to me. I've got a bunch of different breeds in here. Yeah. She looks Carnolian to me. They've got a lot of elbow room in here. So let's let them fill this box up. Then when we go to ship this into eight frame equipment or I add another one of these on top of this box, then we can straighten out some of that crazy comb in there but we need more bees and resources to work with before we do that so leave that mess alone for now let's see what's in this one after today I probably won't be working any of these hives other than feeding them until the uh, 22nd that new moon This queen here, she's coming along nice, but as you can see, we've got a screw up in here. We've got mixed match equipment that we've got to have to weed out. Sometimes when I get hurting for, for making up nooks, I grab this stuff just to make a nook. Well, we did that. We got, we got our queen. We got a brand new queen in here. She's laying pretty good. 
but we got to get her converted over to this other stuff in here. So she's coming along. She's got lots of uh, room to work. So we've got all this stuff here, Queen Wright. Uh, but they're not they're not fat enough to sell. They're not fat enough to sell. Look at these four by fours I got guys. They had a chicken house on them. These these PT four by fours were in my neighbor's junk pile out front. My plan is on these. I'm thinking about taking a pair of post hole diggers and going along here in a few spots and sink them in. I want about oh I don't know. I'm thinking maybe work nice working heights. Maybe like right here. The top of these. So I'll cut these accordingly. And I want to put at least two foot of post in the ground and see I've got a, like a crappy end here I'll put that bad end in the ground I'm gonna have to strip off some of this chicken wire on here it don't look like it's too bad to get off looks like you just put it on with staples so I can just pluck them off of there and my plan is to put a two, the length of my hives, put a two by four, the length of my hives, to where this, they can sit on it and run a two by four this way. And it, actually, they'll be on the side like this, run them this way and this way. And then probably three, four inch deck screws, galvanized deck screws through there and have the top of the two by fours flush with the top of my beam and drop them in, take a torpedo level, you know, level them both ways and set a hive on so they'd be each individual stands along uh, just spread the bees out a little bit so that's the plan on that it's best to get them in direct sunlight, especially in Florida, full sun <laughs> anything, anything guys in the shade in Florida you're asking for uh, hive beetles a high beetle issue because they like they like bees that are in the shade remember that all right what we got over here guys this is a package here
This is them Georgia bees. It's a package. <laughs> and like I'm saying, telling you before, all these guys that do these packages in the spring, they'll put a, a double. They'll put a double. They'll put an excluder. Usually, usually, they're either one or two things. <laughs> there are two deeps, ten frames or eight frame doubles. Or it's a single box. What they'll do is they'll come in and put an excluder through. They don't even look for the queens. They don't look for the queens. They just split the brood, honey, everything equal. Unless you've got double stacked. So they'll do the same thing with that. Say you got a bunch of honey up top, they'll split it up between the two boxes, but they shove an excluder in between. Then they come back in a day or two, three, and see where there's no eggs. Wherever there's no eggs, of course, there's no queen. So then they take that box, leave it on the existing stand. They'll pull that, say, uh, 2019 queen out, put her in a cage, shake all them bees, in a three pound package stick your stick that queen in there then they sell you that so you're buying a year old queen but usually you get a year or so out of them queens so it's not that big a deal plus you're breeding more bees you're constantly making up more nooks from the stock When I run out of these eights, I don't plan on building any more eights. I was going to this summer, but it just gets too flipping hot out here. And I love to do that stuff in the winter time. So I've got all those boxes over there, over yonder, that I can stack these up on. Like I said, hey, you can run these on up. You can make honey with these boxes, these little five frame nooks. Stack them on up. You can run them suckers way up in the air if you want to. This, this colony here, this package here, is not the same quality queen as I got over there. Same outfit, but it's, she's, she's probably winding down. This old girl here is probably winding down. She's just not pumping out the eggs and stuff that the other ones are. I mean, she is laying. There she is right there. She is laying. And really, really, I don't know, she could be tricking me. Look at that one, guys. So when all these bees pop, which is going to be pretty quick, I mean, there was nothing in here. There was nothing in this box other than string frames and foundation. So maybe she's tricking me. Because that's a pretty impressive frame of brood, as you can see. Here's another one. So I'll tell you what, guys, in a few days when these all hatch, when these puppies all hatch, this, this hive's going to blow up pretty fast. But there's tons of elbow room here, so we don't have to worry with 
you know, we're getting these girls some more elbow room. Because we darn sure don't want them to swarm on us. So you just monitor that and keep feeding them. The more you feed these things, if there's even questionable syrup coming in, nectar coming in, feed them. If you feed these bees, they will make her work. They will make her work. All right, let's look at this other package here. There's some more of our friends here. Where's a good where's a good blowtorch, guys, when you need one, right? Okay, she's not on the lid. Okay, she's laying good, guys. They're work pulling that string frame out nice. Georgia bees. I got a I got a club rate on these bees. It's eighty it was eighty five dollars a box. And I'll tell you what, if uh Next year, if they're the same price, I'm going to get more. Queen right five seven. Let's for fun, guys. Let's for fun go into the Martin Hive over here. Got the lid screwed down. I may be a little premature on this, but maybe not. I 
I gotta get some more smoker fuel. Keep an eye on my bees while I'm gone. Okay guys, we got a queen here. She's got a queen right here. There's a new Michigan Martin Queen right there. Okay guys, we got a nice queen in there, she has not started laying yet, she probably, I'm probably, uh, see I put 513 on there, it's only 5.7, we got another 7 days, so she, that's probably, looks to me like a virgin in there. Um, I'm going to put a queen right on 5.7 on there we're gonna come back let's give her there's plenty of elbow room in there for her so let's come back and uh, 
Let's come back in about 10 days. Come back in 10 days and recheck this colony. See what's going on. No need to screw the lid back down. He put the screws in here because he was going to haul this to Michigan in the back of his car. And uh, he had so much stuff in his vehicle he couldn't do it. So that's why, and the fact, and the fact that this queen here, uh, there was just cells in here. And he knew by the time he got back to Michigan, he wouldn't have uh, enough drones in the area for her to mate. So he knew I did around here. These bees are a little nippy on this end down here. I'm going to go get my uh, vinegar. Attitude, they have an attitude. Okay, guys, they got an attitude because they don't have a queen.
Okay guys, I dummied up. <laughs> if I just read if I just read my own instructions, we'd know what to do. I was not supposed to come to this hive until 2 523. Duh. So yeah. Yeah, we screw up once in a while, guys. That's alright. What is this saying? 57. Check 57. Well what's today? 57. Should have been on this hive over here instead of screwing around with that one over there. Oh well. Oh well. This doesn't sound good. This don't sound good. They're real buzzy. Flighty. Don't sound good at all. Don't sound good at all. Let's go in here anyway. Just for fun, you know? Okay, that hive didn't make it. This hive didn't make it at all. She should have had a queen back uh, laying eggs in here by now. We didn't. They're still protecting all this stuff. There's still enough bees here. There's plenty of honey on that. Uh, what I'm going to do is just leave this hive wide open. That's going to get melted down. These have got plastocell. You don't want them in the sun. This one here is kind of garbage. That's just garbage frame anyway. Put them in the shade, and I'm going to let this be yard. They will be swarming all over that stuff here in no time, cleaning that up. So, yeah, that's just, this hive's down. That's fine. We'll make more. All right, I'm going to head over that other bee yard. I'll bring you over there and see what we got over there on them two framers. loading up and going over that other yard we converted them uh, two framers over into five framers and uh, been over there what a week or so and I've been in there a couple times adding more syrup jars I'm not bringing syrup with me now 
we'll see what it is and tomorrow I'll run over there. It's not that far. It's only like four miles away from my, this yard here. Boar's head, hard salami. Once you get fat adapted, this is what you'll crave. And your drink of choice, unsweet green tea. In Florida, ice cold. All right, guys, let's go. Okay, guys, I don't know how long this is gonna go here. I'm seeing I got a low battery. Okay, this queen's doing pretty good. She's laying up everything in here. She hasn't on this side yet. Yeah, this queen's doing really nice, guys. Really nice. Look at that brood pattern. Look at that. This colony's just going to slap blow up they've got two and a half frames they got two and a half frames here that they can work they're working two and a half frames they got the two outside they can do yet so we got plenty elbow room in there They got a little syrup left, that's cool. 